What is up, everybody? Welcome in to the DCI Podcast, episode 26. I am Jason here with Big Sexy Bradley Crenshaw. Episode 26, almost up to 30 episodes. Make sure you guys are commenting, following along on our YouTube channel if you are not. Um, you don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos. Tons of awesome content coming on the channel. Um, so leave us a like, follow, subscribe, um, all that good stuff. Almost a Mike Trout's number. Almost. That's right. Next uh, next episode is going to be our uh, our Trout episode. Maybe you have to uh, talk about Mr. Mike Trout. That's right. You think he's ever going to get out of L.A.? Uh, he needs to if he's ever going to you know, win a world championship. So, <laughs> Well, we'll save that for next week. Uh, episode 26 is this week. Tons of great opportunities to catch DCI, um, not only in person, but on our WhatNot channel as well. So if you guys are looking for a way to kind of get into the hobby, look for some deals. We run $1 auctions every day on that WhatNot channel. Um, really good place to get started, hang out with a uh, fun card community as well. Uh, I'm on there sometimes, so if you guys want to come and hang out with me, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, I don't know if that's a selling point or a. You know, you know, you would probably get a lot more views if you'd paint your fingernails. You think I should paint my fingernails? Yeah, paint, paint, paint my fingernails paint, and yeah, uh, yeah, put them go. on there for the uh, for the stream. That's right. To be a hand model, maybe we should look into that. Getting a hand model for our uh, yeah. for our streams. We'll take it up another level. You know, I was I was messing around on whatnot yesterday, and I pulled it up, and I was watching. Uh, I pulled up backyard breaks, and Sarah for backyard breaks was on there. And I was just watching the comments and her views just kept going up and up and up. And people were asking her, it was like, uh, do you do home deliveries? And then maybe a dinner date, you know, yeah. and all this other stuff. And all I thought was maybe Jay just needs to paint his fingernails. That's that, right. That, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what not always a great option. We run that um, during the week. Great way to hop in, hang out, pick up some great deals. Uh, this weekend, we will be at at a San Antonio, the San Antonio Collectors Expo. We'll be down there this weekend, as well as the GG2 Sports Card Show in Springdale, Arkansas. Both great shows. Love, love them both. Great shows. Yep. Uh, really looking forward to this weekend. So make sure you guys come out. $8 a card uh, all weekend long. Same day turnaround on the RCRs. Going to be a great weekend. But uh, that is what we've got going on in terms of DCI happenings. Uh, let's maybe check out the the week in review in the hobby. What do you say? Mm, you know, all it's right. A, it's all, always a good 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 time to re reflect back into the hobby. That's right. Well, I want to start off talking about a documentary that just came out on Apple TV. Um, Behind the card is the documentary focused on the hobby. Um, I really just want to get your thoughts and some initial first takes. I know you've watched the uh, the documentary so far. I'm about to hop in. Um, and I'll give you some thoughts on that next week, but I just want to hear what your initial take was, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you wish they would have done maybe. Um, you know, um, I wish they wouldn't have had Davis vague. Uh, what's his name? Vegas, Vegas Dave, Dave, Davis <laughs> vague, vague, vague Davis. He's vague anyway. You know, yeah. he's vague in all his predictions it needs to be his name. Not Vegas Dave needs to be vague Dave. That's what it needs to be. That's right. So I wish they would remove that guy yeah. from the show because, you know, there's a lot. There's that guy's just. It, I'm gonna be quite honest with you. He's an idiot. <laughs> he is an idiot, and he does not need to be in that show. Um, all he does is talk negative about the card market and the industry, and 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 we all know markets go up, markets come down. You know, the the whole theory, and you know, it, it's the truth. What goes up must come down, and it's just like a roller coaster. You ride the markets. And this guy talks nothing about but himself. And the reason that the market is the way that it is, is or the reason it exploded is because of him. He saw the vision in the Mike Trout card, and he bought the Mike Trout card for $400,000. And people called him an idiot for buying the card. And then he sells it for $4 million, which was a 10x return. And I loved the comments that Jeff Wilson made in that movie or that documentary. Jeff Wilson comes right back on top of that and says, you know, he talks about a 10x return, but had he invested in this player and this player, he would have been 20x, 30x, 50x in a Kobe Bryant during that time. So for a guy to say he projected or, you know, saw the future of the card market, and that's the reason he did the investment, is a complete and utter idiot move and he should have never made those comments because it did not blow up because of him and if he could see the future like that why didn't you invest in Kobe Bryant 50x return on a $400,000 investment do the math what's that 20 million dollars that's right 
Come on, dude. That would have been good. Yeah. That the show nice. the show itself. <laughs> yeah. The show itself. I mean, Rob, Rob Go, just an amazing guy. That is one of the nicest guys in the hobby. Uh Rob, Rob talks about how he started off, you know, buying cards in the hobby. And he was just not able to turn those numbers that he was used to turning, you know, and the type of money that he wanted to make. And so that's the reason he went into like his vintage, you know, mantle purchase of the nine, where it was like five point two something like that, five, over $5 million that he purchased, which was assisted by Jesse, Craig, and PWCC. Yep. Um, you know, and Jesse's in the in the show, you know, talking and talking about their vault service and going through that. I mean, it's a, it's a good documentary to give you a perspective of the hobby, especially for the outsiders who are brand new in the hobby, wanting to understand what, you know, where the hobby was before and where sure. it is now. You know, because they had the eyes on there that from, what's that um, baseball card shop that's real popular. They, they're, I'm trying to remember what their name is. They're, they're in that show. But anyway, got baseball cards or got, okay. got baseball, whatever that shop is they've got that's up north somewhere. I'm not familiar, but. Yeah, I think it's in I, Ohio yeah. or somewhere up there. They're in there talking about, you know, where the where their shop was before and where it is now and. You know, they tried the breaking, you know, getting into the breaking world, but they didn't want to be up at 2 a.m. running breaks and so on and so on. Right. So to give people a perspective of where the hobby was and where the hobby is now, but do not listen to <laughs> vague Dave in that movie because that's what he is. He's completely vague on everything, and he has no idea what he's talking about. Well, one of my things uh – I know you'd, you'd kind of mentioned before, he says that the market's crashing, right? And he's down on the card market. Yeah, bo- but he burns a Michael Jordan rookie. Yeah, unbelievable. But then at the same time, uh, you know, comes back to mention that he's going to hold on to his Derek Carr investments um, just for a little bit longer just to see, you know what I mean? But, you know, if the market was really crashing, you'd want to, uh, you know, let go and cash out now, I think. But uh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, why, why hold on to the da- David Carrs or, you know? Derek, Derek yeah, Carr, Derek, Derek, yeah, Derek, David Carr for I sure. I always get not. those two, <laughs> two mixed up. David <laughs> Carr, Derek Carr. David Carr was drafted by the Houston Texans. That's right. Back in 2004, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Around then. He didn't, I make been, it, he didn't make it very long. I was 10 years old, yeah. so uh, it was a little while ago And for then me. Derek comes along. <laughs> yeah, but e- e- either, either way, a Derek Carr, David Carr. You right, know, they're worth about the same at this know. point. Right, yeah, it, they're worth about the same at this point. That's exactly right. Well, that kind of leads me into my next point. Um, I guess touching on the documentary, one one quick um, last point. There wasn't much of the buying and selling aspect covered in that, or or kind of mention of those record sales um, over the past couple of years. Or is was there um, some highlighting of that in comparison? Very to, little highlighting yeah. of of that, especially over the the documentary was created up and through probably. 2021 mm-hmm. and, and being in the hobby somebody who's been in the hobby for as long as I have I was able to pinpoint more of the time era you know for new people who haven't you know they're not going to be able to do that so you know the, yes the, the doc was was created and done you know over a year ago and it, it went through production to get to where it is now but right uh it wasn't able to show you know some of those big highlighted sales but it did show some well, what's interesting, the reason I ask is because, you know, right around the start of the, the COVID time, like early 2020, late 2019, um, is when people kind of consider that to the hobby to have boomed, right? To have kicked off and all these people enter the hobby, all the money enters the hobby. We start seeing all these record sales. We're kind of seeing the market correct now. But at that same time is when they were making this documentary. Do you think that um, it's a little bit... Uh, inflated, if you will, like some of the scenes maybe from when the hobby was at its absolute peak uh, relative to where it's at now? Uh, no, I mean, it shows kind of both both spectrums. Yep. Um, I mean, it doesn't lead you to believe that, you know, the hobby is at its all-time high. Sure. I mean, it does talk in there about, you know, the highs and the lows of the hobby. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it also gives, you know, the, the understanding that the, the hobby's here to stay. Uh, and we keep referring to it as the hobby because ultimately it's, it is a hobby, it, it is a hobby you know, right. and, and, but a lot of people have turned it into a business An industry. Yes. Right. So I guess we need to change that word to more of the industry is here to stay correct rather than the hobby is here to stay. 
Uh, don't I, I don't like the word, and it, it drives me crazy to see these people talk about the hobby is alive. That just <laughs> that is so cringing to me. Yeah, you know, it's the the hobby is a co- of course the industry is alive. Right. It's just you're going through a market correction right now. Um, do I think that's here to stay? No, I do not. Vegas Dave thinks so. He thinks it's here to stay forever now. You know, but I don't believe that. I believe we're just in a correction. I believe that once we get into 2023 and on into 2024, you're going to see that market start to shift back again in a different way. Because what you find is the collectors, the business people, the hobbyists, so to speak, uh, in this industry are getting smarter. Right. They're getting more educated. They now They're have, learning. They now have the data from yes. the first cycle. Right? But at first, it was like, you know, all this influx of money, and it's just starts throwing money. Throw it. It's just worth, throw, yeah. it. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Right. Yes. I mean, it's like, I mean. It's going I, up. It's going up. Remember everything? Uh, that was the best phrase for I mean, like a year and a half. I like, even fell oh, into some of that up. where I was like, I was like. You know, is it, do I sell now? Do Is it going to continue to go up? And then some of my cards, I was like, oh man, I can't believe I sold those, man. I really wish I, I'd kept those. And now looking back, I'm like, man, I'm God. glad I sold yeah. that. I mean, right. I sold a, I sold a PSA 10 tops Chrome Steph Curry rookie for $85,000. It's insane. Through auction, through, yeah. through PWCC auction. So after fees and all that. Yeah. Paid for auction. I sold a LeBron James BGS 10 Tops Chrome for $75,000 through PWCC auction. Now, you can buy a Steph Curry. I think you may even pick that card up for less than 20 maybe, maybe around, around 20. Yeah, I think 20 to 30 yeah. range, yeah. So, at that point, I mean, I was also in that that fear of is this is it or that that outlook of how much higher is it going to go right you know but at the same point you know i tell everybody you cannot be greedy you can't look back you can't look back but you also don't need to be greedy and what i mean by that is the amount of money that i had in those cards you made made a a profit profit. absolutely and so move on and we talk about this too yes you go to a show people don't need to try to you know just pull all they can out of somebody, make your profit, allow somebody else to make a profit and move on. Now, I don't know that anybody else made a profit on that auction. Right. You know, but especially ne- at where that the present now. time, you know, they thought that the market was going to continue to go up. So go they up. took that gamble. Right. You know, so it's just a, it's a fun, it's a fun industry. It is. And, and, and I talked about this yesterday on some content we were shooting, you know, that I'm a collector at heart, hundred percent a collector. There, I, I enjoy, I get joy from my collection. Yep. I get to look at those players. I get to watch those players on television, you know, and to be able to know, to sit there and watch Patrick Mahomes play on Sunday and know that I have an investment in Mahomes. Makes and, it that and, much more. And he's must watch television. 100%. You know, and it's like, you know, it's like, man, that's, that's just awesome to know that I have stock in that particular, and that's kind of the way well, I look, and it's it, not sure. stock, but I look at it as I have a piece of stock or a piece of investment in that player, and it's just it's it's a lot. It's entertaining. It makes for me it at all much play. more. Yeah, right. Yes. It's like betting on a game that you don't have any uh, any fight in. You know what I mean? A dog in the fight. Absolutely, uh, and it makes and, the game interesting. Yep. Right. And I'm all about you know buy what I like. It's it's all about buy what I like. It's not about it's not about buying what's what the hobby per industry perceives to be the most valuable asset out there right it's i buy what i like and that's uh very important to people getting into the hobby one of the first things we always tell people is don't spend what you're not willing to lose you know what i mean like if you buy something you better like it enough for it to go to zero because if it goes to zero you're going to be stuck with it so at the very least you better enjoy it yeah no when i say i buy what i I buy what i like for my personal personal collection right now, for, if I'm talking investment purposes, of course I'm going to go with what the market is, is showing me on the investment side. Right. But if I'm buying those items, it's strictly investment purposes and at some point to flip. Well, and uh, that kind of leads me into my next question, which is during this peak buying season that we just talked about from like 2020 to 2021, 
all of these young prospects went crazy. And we've talked about this on a past podcast before, the prospect versus GOAT, um, what's safe versus the risk, and, and how you, um, you in particular or just people in the hobby try to uh, take the risk on those players. But maybe it's not even, you know, talking about the talent of the player. Maybe you pick the right player. Let's just say Justin Herbert. I think Justin Herbert, people can agree, is a, is a good professional quarterback. He's going to have a fine career. We don't need to argue whether he's better or worse than anybody, but he is a good pro quarterback. Let's just say you picked up some cheap Justin Herbert stuff um, or some Justin Herbert stuff early in his career, okay. which just happened to be the peak of the hobby, right? Is there any way now that you can profit um, on your Justin Herbert cards in today's market with the market being the way it is? No. Um, even though Justin Herbert is great and he's getting better year by year and they're going to put some, st- um, some pieces around him, why won't those cards go up anymore, uh, in your opinion? Overproduced with the amount of rookies that are available on the market. Okay. Uh, there's, there's too many options of that card on the market and there's too much speculation behind new players in the hobby industry. Keep, I need to reprogram my vocabulary. That's that. right. Too much. There's too many options in the industry for those players and they've not proven anything. Just because you go out and win 10 games, 12 games a year on a football field does not justify paying $1.8 million for a shield card of, you know, Justin Herbert. Right. For example, has Justin Herbert – has Justin Herbert won an MVP? I don't believe so. Okay. So let me give you a prime example. Justin Herbert, shield, NT, sells for $1.8 million. Okay? Lamar Jackson, National Treasures, NT Shield, the NT Shield, same exact card. Yep. I believe Lamar has an MVP, right? He does. And I'm, and and in the talks of another one. That's absolutely – oh, he's on fire this okay. season. Yeah. His NFL Shield just sold a week ago mm-hmm. for $190,000. So explain that to me. Explain to me why the big difference. Now, we can all sit here and argue – that Justin Herbert is more the prototype passer. He's a pocket passer. He's he's mobile, but in Lamar Jackson is a better athlete. We can all agree there. Exactly. Athlete wise, Lamar Jackson's not the pass, pocket passer like like Herbert is. Herbert's more of the quarterback style. Blah blah. But still, there's no justification in 1.6 million dollar yeah. difference Ten in times. the two quarterbacks yeah. when one has an MVP and one doesn't. That's exactly right. Now, at the same time, I guess where I'm going with my line of questioning is, did the peak of the boom of the hobby drive that price up um, on that Herbert Shield to a point where now, uh, let's just say Herbert goes and wins an MVP in a Super Bowl, now that the market has kind of come back down, how do those people who bought at the peak of 2020, 2021, will they ever recover? Is there a way for them to ever kind of get back to that peak market Or, you know, will it take five years, 10 years, 20 years before those prices are, you know, realized just from natural inflation? I think some of your rare stuff, maybe, maybe there's an opportunity down the road if Herbert goes and wins a few Super Bowls Mm -hmm. that gets that card back up there to those types of prices. Um, but as far as that goes, it's going to be the rare stuff. I mean, it's a super rare, super rare, rare items would be the only opportunity and only in certain brands Correct. we can i mean right like the, xr right. nfl shields are, are not gonna n- never going to be what they were at the peak probably. never right. people were just buying 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 crazy and now they've gotten a lot smarter to the hobby i mean the industry I keep saying the hobby Man, that's exactly right God. the industry so I mean, it's just like Mac Jones, Justin Fields. You start going on Zach Wilson. And these people, when they were paying all this money for Zach Wilson, I had the conversation with them boys from South Louisiana at the Dallas Card Show. I was laughing at Tommy Badeau for buying – Sorry, oh, Tommy. Zach Wilson. Sorry, you know, buddy. For buying Zach Milfson 
That's right. You know, at the time, that's right. Uh, at the show, I mean, it was like I said, "What are you doing?" He, man, he, he, he's great investment, great investment. How's that investment working out for you now, buddy? <laughs> he's sitting on the bench because he has a poor attitude, right? And nobody likes him in the locker room. And Mike White throws a better and ball for the. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> watching Mike White, he he definitely a better passer. But if you look at the two, Mike White is a pocket passer. Yep. Zach Wilson is a, a little more look mobile. at a look at a look at a you know one or two reads and then take off running. Right. You know those types of quarterbacks just don't make it in the NFL. And I mean, there's there's nobody the, the amount of people that invested in Davis Mills. Where's he at now? He's on the bench. People have so much FOMO when it comes to the card collecting because they saw that boom of the industry yep. happen and now they're like. Oh, I don't want to miss out. I, n- I need to get on that next wave. I need to buy that next player. I need to do this. I need to do that. And then they put all this money into it. And as a matter of fact, I was just talking to, you know, Preston and them down when we were in Tennessee. And they bought a Davis Mills Black Finite yep. 101 that I believe uh, – what's his name bought? What's, what, Chris. Uh, yeah. He paid 40 yes. for it, I believe. On yeah. All, yep. Bought it off of auction. Yep. And he's like – and Preston's like, I don't know why in the world you bought that, dude. You know, they're never going to be able to get their money out of that card. I don't even think they could get $5,000 for that card yeah. in today's market at all. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the newer prospect guys, I just believe it's going to take so much right. for them to reach the levels of where the, the prices, prices were at. Were but at. It's the same thing in basketball, though. It's the same thing with Luka. People – and. You were just at the game last night. I was. That was going to bring me and to Luca, our next point. 41 points, 12 rebounds, 12, you know, what do you have, 12, 12 assists? assists. Yeah, he's a, a triple-double. Right. Amazing numbers. A phenomenal talent. Yep. But his prices of his cards are astronomically overpriced. And this is no negative to the hobby, the industry. The industry. That I love Luca. But we need to there. There needs to be a correction in that. That there's his prices should never reach and your, Michael Jordan. And your it starts at the top, right? It started yeah. with the logo man. We're kind of seeing it. Um, big biggest loss ever on a sports card um, in terms of you know percentage on the logo man. But again, that's again the market correcting. Uh, like you said, Luca's prices were unjustifiably high. He could be the best player in the league, and my next question was actually going to be: But do you, do you think this is Luca's MVP year? Uh, that was my that was going to be my uh, my next question. But but you're exactly right. Luca's you know the market drove and the boom and the FOMO drove his cards up so high um, that you know people are paying four million dollars for a Luca when you could pay a million for a LeBron. It's kind of like the Herbert and the Lamar Jackson. Um, one's got the awards and a little more proven. Um, one's more prospect, you know, the FOMO don't want to miss out on that $10 million Mm -hmm. potential Luca sale. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, what I was going to get into next was, is this Luca's year? Um, I mean, it could be a little little hometown, a little hometown talk here. It could be, I'm going to back up though on that, on that logo, man. We all saw in the hobby that it was a four something million dollar transaction. Supposedly, supposedly. We don't know what that actual price was, what the actual transaction. It was never gone to public auction. It was a picture of a check and an invoice. That check could have been torn up the minute that picture was taken that we don't know what that transaction was. So, yes, on paper to the public eye, uh, it was the largest loss on a sports card. And that's what everybody run with. Sure. But on actual record, it's the highest priced Realized modern that. basketball <laughs> card to ever be sold in public auction. Oh, that's exactly right. So yeah. that could have went either way. That could have been an inflated picture to show, to drive the price up so that when we went to auction, it goes for more. There's a lot of things, a lot totally. of things that people talk about with that card or things that could have happened with that card. Nobody knows. The only people that are going to know that were the two people that were sitting at that table that allowed that transaction to take place. That's the only people that will know. That's exactly and right. to be yeah. honest with you, that's the only people that really need to know. know. It doesn't yeah. matter. That's it exactly really right. doesn't matter. All that matters is that card set a record 
in public auction for a modern day basketball card, which is a positive for the industry. Absolutely. So it (laughs) is a new record. Congratulations to the new owner of a absolutely beautiful card. card, Sweet card. Of my favorite player in the NBA currently right now. Also a hometown boy. That's right. We're, I hope he brings the MVP home this yes. year. I just think I think he is. Um, I think he. I think he's got it this year. I think he's got it in the bag. Um, the scoring's up. The defense is up. I just hope the Mavs can win enough games. I uh, ten. We're only what a quarter way through the season though. Yep, that's right. Twenty yeah. games. Twenty games in. So um, Mavs right at five hundred, and uh, we need to pick it up a little bit. But uh, should be good moving forward. He's definitely the front runner. He has he, to be. He, he, is, yeah. he is the front runner. He has Nobody to be. else. He's, he's, I believe he's. You he's know, just so good. It's yeah, unbelievable. He, he is good. He is unbelievable. Anyways, thanks, guys. That does it for us. Episode 26, uh, another great week here at DCI. Make sure you guys are subscribing, leaving comments, likes, checking out our podcast on YouTube, social media, um, all that good stuff. Hop into our whatnot streams as well. Come and hang out with you guys. Great place to uh, join the community, get some deals. Um, but that is it for us today. I am Jason, Big Sexy, with me here. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Peace. No problem. No problem.